future prediction about life science industry. What can happen? What crazy things can happen in the next 24 months, which will blow your mind? Life science industry means a lot of things, right from marine biology to agri-biotechnology to what not. It has got its fingers into almost every domain which impacts humanity. In the next 24 months, some exciting things are going to happen in the life science research industry and you must keep a tab of it because what is going to happen next after it is each time a revolution happens leads to more career opportunities more opportunities for people like you so watch this video till the end and you will be enlightened about what is going to happen so that you are ready okay first things first imagine how many months our mother had to keep us in her tummy right in the uterus and that's how we were born the embryo our artificial womb advances that is going to happen in the next 24 months you will see successful experiments where researchers will make groundbreaking progress in developing artificial wombs that can successfully grow a mammal embryo and most possibly humans also well a lot of ethical issues are going to happen stay tuned for that just imagine the natural womb creates so many health issues for women but what if we could have artificial womb so that we could incubate the baby right outside our body and they could come out healthy. We have always seen this in scientific and science fiction movies. But scientific advances in the last 24 months suggest that in the next 24 months, this could be a reality. Remember the dolly the sheep? Same way you will see artificial wombs happening across the globe. The next thing which we are going to see, you have heard of it a lot of times and that is AI powered drug discovery health technology. Now you see, biopharmaceutical companies face a lot of challenges when it comes to drug discovery. And when, once it gets approved, taking it to the market and getting it on the counter, it's a huge battle. No other industry faces that. Wherein to find a product itself, you know, it costs you billions of dollars. So AI powered drug discovery is going to take shape. In the next 24 months, we are really going to see unprecedented speed Powerful AI algorithms are poised to churn out potential drug candidates at a breakneck speed. And this will speed up the traditional slow and costly drug development process. Further to that, we will see accelerated trials, clinical trials, because AI generated drugs candidates will undergo clinical trials faster, leading to new treatment options hitting the market faster. And then this will lead to more diverse possibilities because the more it comes out successful, it will give more confidence to scientists and developers to work in this direction. Now, the third crazy thing which is going to happen in the next 24 months is, well, a bit of it has already happened, brain-computer interface. You must have seen Neuralink, um, a patient was, um, you know, tweeting on Twitter or x.com using his brain. He didn't use any of his hands or anything, right, or voice. He did it through his brain. The brain was directly con connected to internet. Imagine in today's world, if you're directly connected to internet, how much information you could directly download and do what not. So we will see a lot of unprecedented possibilities happening in the next 24 months. We will see precision coming in. So right now there is no precision in the brain computing interface, that precision will come. Now breakthrough in the BCI, which we call it as brain computer interface, will enable people with disabilities to control devices with ease and unlocking new possibilities, new independence uh, and mobility for people who could not move earlier. For example, a blind person will be able to write. A person who is not able to move will be able to work over the internet, work from home. And you will see more communication happening. It will facilitate communication between a comatose patient and the doctor. It will lead to better coordination and collaboration in the brain-computer interface space. And more companies will jump in. So it will restore the function of the human body. Maybe somebody uh, met with an accident and now he cannot move, he lost his limbs. But now with the help of computers, he is directly connected and he can work and he can earn a living. So that is going to happen very, very soon. That's crazy, but that's going to happen. The next one which we are going to see crazy thing is 3D replacement of tissues. Now 3D printing of tissues. Suppose an injury happens and now this part of the tissue is gone. 
Now, what if we could print the tissue, we could take the stem cell, we could trim, print the tissue in a 3D printer and place it back and just put some band-aids and it just does the job. We, we have seen cornea transplants happening. Researchers are developing 3D printed uh, corneas that could be used to restore sight uh, for those with cornea blindness and this will lead to lesser vision loss due to cornea loss. Next one, we, what we'll see is vascular graft. So bioprinting techniques will enable us to create small scale blood vessels and vascular grafts that could significantly improve treatment for cardiovascular diseases. And this will pave a way to more 3D printing based regenerative medicine uh, based uh, therapies for humans. Now the next crazy thing which is already happening again is lab grown meat. So lab grown meat is going to go mainstream. Now there is a lot of skepticism about it. But I will ask you, I give you two burgers. One is real meat, but you had to kill someone. And one is lab grown meat. Same taste, but you didn't kill anyone. It is a plant based meat. Imagine that will change the way people will, you know, consume food and it will be more a healthier and greener way of doing it instead of killing someone, right? So we will see more taste and texture advancements in the meat which will be grown in lab. We will see this leading to lesser environmental impact because raising cattle and then killing them leads to a lot of CO2 global warming impact on the at a global level. We will see the industry landscape shifting wherein now you will have options where you don't kill someone and eat. Instead, you can directly grow uh, meat in the lab and eat and that will be le leading to more and more widespread acceptance among consumers. Now, I want to ask you this question. Today, you might think like, what if it's not good? What if it's not healthy? But 20 years ago, you would have found it weird that you sat in a stranger's car and he took you from point A to point B safely. Today, you do that with Uber and Ola. The same thing is going to happen. Consumer acceptance is a part of the entire lobby. How it is presented, people accept it. So you're going to see plant-based meat or lab-grown meat coming in mains. Next crazy thing is going to be anti-aging. And why it is going to be mainstream? Because all the billionaires don't want to die because they are billionaires, right? Or they, they possibly could be trillionaires if you just continue living, right? So billionaires are pouring in money to stay longer. <laughs> well, this is funny, but yeah, it's true. We all want to live longer, right? So targeting the biology of aging, finding out why we age and then developing new therapies. This is going to happen. A lot of investment is coming in this. We will be able to mimic the caloric restriction and we will be entering an advanced phase and of testing in the next 24 months where we will really see progress coming into the anti-aging domain. Next exciting field, field where you are going to see crazy advancement and in fact I think it should have happened long back is pig to human transplants, xenotransplantation. <laughs> so pigs are similar to humans. What if we could take their heart and transplant into us? We could take their liver or kidney and we could transplant into us. There are so many liver failure cases, so many kidney failure cases and we wait for donors. Instead, we could grow it or we could use a pig liver or pig kidney. So now there will be a lot of ethical debates always about this. There will be ethical de debates. But in the last two years, we are very close to this close to clinical trials and we will see that happening. But the impact it will have on human life will be huge. We'll be able to save so many lives, so many near and dear ones die because of liver or uh, organ failure, right? So we will be able to save that. Well, this were the seven or yeah, seven uh, crazy positive things. Now I'm going to tell you three crazy negative things which might happen. Number one is the sitting pandemic antimicrobial resistance. Now, reckless use of antibiotics, no new antibiotics coming in, and the bacteria ad adjusting to the antibiotic. We are sitting on a pandemic where we pop in a pill and there's no effect. You have cold and cough and you will hear people dying out of cold and cough because the antibiotic has no effect. My point here is, we're sitting on a pandemic already. It is bound to happen. It may happen in the next 24 months. So if we do not wake up today, if our scientists, our policymakers, if we don't come together, then we are looking potentially at the second pandemic within five years of span. 
the previous one we just came out of. So that's the AMR pandemic. Now followed by that, the return of COVID. This is another dark possibility. We are already seeing long COVID among patients. And if this long COVID or similar things, or maybe the virus mutates and there is no effect of the vaccine, we might see the COVID coming back and the world going under a lockdown. So the time has come that we continue what we practiced during the pandemic phase. Hygiene should be maintained, sanitation should be maintained, distance should be maintained, and always our policymakers and scientists should be on an alert so that epidemiology wise, if we see a uh, epidemic happening, we have to stop it then and there so that a pandemic doesn't happen. So that's very important. The last and the scariest part is bioweapons. Yes, you heard me right. Humans live in a balance. So recently, as at the time of shooting this video, we are seeing Iran-Israel fighting. 50 years, 70 years back, we saw Russia, US getting into a nuclear race. Prior to that, we saw two world wars, World War I and World War II. So basically, all this keeps happening because we humans have a problem in our mind. We want supremacy over others. We want to dominate others. And that leads to fights. And developed countries, sadly, if you observe, are not stopping by then developing the bioweapon. They are developing it. They're not talking about it. But even though there are so many conventions, global conventions in place, Geneva Convention is in place, still bioweapon research is going on across seven to 10 countries that I know of. That is one dark side of life science research. Crazy thing it may happen in the next 24 months. We come to an end of 10 crazy things which will happen in the next 24 months in the life science research industry. Let me know which one interests you, which one you would like to get into and which one we should stop or we should not go in to save humanity or to uh, you know keep growing the research function. So coming to the last part, um, I personally, if you ask me which one I'm most excited about, I'm excited about the brain computer interface because I am so much into computers. And the second thing which I'm uh, interested about is the, the artificial embryo. And the third thing which I'm interested about would be obviously the 3D printing of organs and uh, uh, tissue replacement. So these are the three things I'm really excited about. Let me know what you are excited about so that we can come together and have a debate. Thank you so much. Keep shining. Bye-bye.